I have to start this video with an old saying that says, better late than ever. And uh, the reason why I'm saying that, it's because it took me a while to get into Shenmue 1 and 2. It took me a while to get into this franchise, but uh, man, it was worth it. And greetings YouTube gamers, welcome to another episode of Retro Raider. My name is Johnny Retro and welcome to the channel. I'm going to jump right into the video, I'm not even going to roll the intro because I'm very excited to finally make a video about Shenmue. Now just a quick heads up guys, this is not going to be a review of the original games, this is not going to be a comparison between these new remaster ports with the old school ones, I mean there's a ton of videos about that and uh, I'm not an expert, I'm, I'm a noob when it comes to Shenmue. This video is just going to be about my impressions, my my initial reactions as, as a new fan of the series because I did became a Shenmue fan after playing these games. Now first things first, I want to share with you guys a little bit of my personal background with Shenmue because yes, this was the first time that I've beaten these games, but um, it was not the first time that I played Shenmue or this was not my introduction to the series. So we have to go way back to 2001. And uh, why 2001? Well, this was when GTA 3 was released on the PS2. And uh, this is an important part for the story because at the time, you know, growing up in the early 2000s, I, I grew up with the PS2. So yeah, I didn't own a Dreamcast. As a matter of fact, I still don't own a Dreamcast now in my collection. And uh, back in the day when I was a kid, you know, I always had the new thing, you know, the new console. But uh, I was only allowed to have one console at the time, you know, when it comes to the, to the current generation. So for example, I had the PS2. So my parents wouldn't give me, you know, the Dreamcast or the Xbox, and uh, that's understandable, and I'm not complaining here, I had amazing parents, and uh, I love the PlayStation. And a lot of my friends at the time had a PS2, I didn't met a lot of people with the Dreamcast back in the day, but uh, one of my best friends, and uh, his name is Mario, and no, it's not this Mario, we were at the same school, we lived one block from each other, and uh, this guy had them all, this guy had the Xbox, the PS2, and the Dreamcast. So let's go back to late 2001. And uh, at that time, we were both playing GTA 3. I mean, everybody with the PS2 was playing GTA 3. That game is really amazing. But um, I remembered that this friend of mine, Mario, he got, I think it was maybe at Christmas, you know, 2001, he got Shenmue, the first one, for the Dreamcast. And he always used to call me, you know, to check out his brand new games. And uh, I went to his place. And I was watching Shenmue. Now, Shenmue at this time, Shenmue was released almost two years before uh, GTA 3. And I was mind blown with the stuff that I was seeing on his television, playing on his Dreamcast. Because my reaction was, well, this is an alternative to GTA 3. And uh, it looks better. It looks better than GTA 3 when it comes to the graphics, the ambience. But uh, it wasn't exclusive. So I played a little bit, but not a lot, because, you know, we were not hanging out all the time, and my friend Mario, you know, this guy was playing the game. And uh, when it comes to a storytelling game, a game that has a storyline, RPG elements within it, you know, it is not the type of game where, you know, you can play a little bit today, and then missing a part, or... <laughs> you guys know what I mean, so... I totally forgot about Shenmue over the years. But I've always knew about the Shenmue community, and, uh... I think this was E3 2015, I mean, when they announced Shenmue 3, the entire world and the entire Shenmue community was crazy about it, and with a good reason. Because fans have been waiting more than 15 years for, for a conclusion, for a sequel, for Shenmue 3. Then last year we got these amazing HD remasters, and uh, I said to myself, well, I'm going to try it out, but uh, I, I was not in a hurt, you know, in a hype to play them. So I waited, until now. So last August, this summer, I found this game on a sale at a gaming store and uh, yeah, I decided to pick it up and play the entire thing during August. And I did, I finally beat it, both games, so let's talk about Shenmue. I jump into these games with a very open mind because we are talking about a Dreamcast game. We are talking about a game that is almost 20 years old, so it didn't age very well in some aspects, but um, that's why I'm saying that these specific HD remasters, to me, they are more like 
like ports, you know, faithful ports to the original games. I popped Shenmue 1 and I've played it for about two to three hours more or less. That was my first session with Shenmue and uh, don't hate me just yet. My first initial impression was, or impressions, first of all, yeah, the game the game aged, but um, you can you can see that is an old game. But uh, when it comes to the graphics, they're very good. They're very good for a game that was released in late 1999. However, I thought to myself, well, this this is boring. The game is just boring. A lot of walking, a lot of dialogues, a lot of cutscenes, not a lot of action. Then it's real time, but uh, you just can't speed things up. You can't just go to sleep and end the day whenever you want, so that's why I thought, well, well, I'm not gonna make it. I'm not enjoying this. This is, this is just boring. This is not for me. But then I gave it a second try and this is when the game really caught me because the thing was, I was playing the game in a wrong way. I was not approaching Shenmue the way you have to. Because the whole point of the game, especially with the first one, is to interact with the NPCs, is to to explore the world, to explore to explore the environment. It is it is a game where you need to let yourself sink into the game, you know? I think that this is going to be a little bit poetic, but it is not about fighting stuff in the game, it's more about let the game find you. In some ways it is a linear game because it is not that much of an open world environment, it's more of a sandbox, but in other ways it is not linear because I mean th there's so much stuff to do in Shenmue, there's so much to discover, you really need to sink into this one. So again, about the graphics, I really don't think that it aged that bad, to be honest with you. You can tell that it is it is an old game, but uh, you know, the characters, you know, the faces of the characters and the animations, you can really see the emotions on their faces. And again, guys, late 99, at the time, this was amazing. This was unbelievable. Music, well, the music is very atmospheric. I think that it suits the game really, really well. And about the genre of the game, well, I keep calling it an RPG and uh, it definitely has a lot of RPG elements to it. And uh, I think that it is not a mistake to put it in that category, but uh, I mean, there's so much to, to Shenmue. It is, it is an adventure game. It is an exploration game. It has RPG elements to it, it has action elements to it, but it also has a lot of simulation aspects to it. So at, at the same time, it is a simulation adventure RPG game, if you will. And that is good, because when a game is original and you can't put a label on it, that's a good thing, in my book. Now, speaking about the action part of the game, about the fighting within Shenmue, well, the fighting of Shenmue it almost felt that I was playing Virtual Fighter on the Sega Saturn. And of course that martial arts is a strong theme in the game. And uh, you don't have a lot of fights, especially in Shenmue 1, that is true. But when you do, it feels, it feels important, it feels special. So each time that you get into a fight, you, you can savor it. So, I like the fact that you're just not fighting waves and waves of enemies, like in a beat-em-up. So, like I said, when you fight, when you have action in Shenmue, it feels, it feels special and, uh, yeah, it definitely suits me. The real-time events, well, sometimes when they pop up and I'm not ready for them, you know, I screw it up and I, I feel a little bit upset, but um, I enjoy them, you know, overall, because they definitely bring a new flavor to the game. And another very cool touch that they kept, they preserved in these remasters was the fact that you can import saves from Shenmue 1 to Shenmue 2. At the time that must have been crazy, I can only imagine, but uh, I think it's still cool. It's cool, so that's why I, I kind of approach these games, you know, as a newcomer. That's why I approach these as, as a standalone game or two games that are part of, of a bigger picture. I really don't know if they're going to keep that in Shenmue 3. I don't know if that's even possible, but uh, it'll be cool. Now, going back to the main focus of the game, 
this is a story-driven game, and uh, this is an adventure. And the story of Shenmue, it, it is not bad, I mean, it is well told, but um, to me, I don't think it is going to be memorable for me, but usually in these type of games, you know, the story, it's what keeps you going. But for me, it was... It was not just that. What driven me, it was not only the story, but most importantly, the way you interact within the story, how the events change, how you interact with the world, because the world of Shenmue, it's, it, it feels like it is really, really alive. For example, I left the house and I was approaching an NPC, and then, the next day within the game, if I approach the same NPC, the dialogue would be would be different. Some NPCs have their own stories, their personal backgrounds, their personal traits, if you will, and they are very different from each other, so it's not like, you know, it is a copy-paste situation here. The atmospheric sounds of the streets, you know, even the people walking, the weather changing. I mean, even taking a walk with Ryu on the street. Just that, as simple as that. I could tell that I was playing quality game. Now about the activities and mini games of Shenmue. That's really the the icing on the top of the cake because that's how you get to pass time within the game. So aside from talking to NPCs, you know, getting clues to move on with the story, we have a lot of different activities and uh, as simple as they are, you know, stuff like, you know, practicing martial arts, playing darts, going to to the arcades. Uh, collecting capsule, capsule toys, you know. Although they're simple, they never felt boring to me. So my mindset during the first couple of hours I was playing Shenmue was like, well, this is going to, to take forever, the days just, just don't end at all. But then, when I started to interact with the world, with the NPCs and doing activities, the days just, just passed by me and uh, I was not even noticing. Because they're fun, they're just fun, and I think that that's a gimmick within Shenmue. I think that the simplicity of the game makes it good, makes it fun. Now, moving on to Shenmue 2, I think that Shenmue 2 grabbed everything that was good about Shenmue 1, but uh, it just took it to, to the next level. The world is way, way bigger. You get introduced to a lot of brand new characters. Of course, that the story expands a lot, and we do have more action elements to it, but um, I don't know, I think that I think that I prefer Shenmue 1, I really don't know why, but uh, as I was saying guys, you know, early on on the video, I, I approach this as a standalone game, I know it, they are two games, it is two games, but uh, I like to approach them as a part one story or the first part of the story and the second part of the Shenmue story. So why do I prefer Shenmue 1? Well, I really don't know why, I really don't know why, I guess that I like that, that feeling of not knowing what what you have to do and uh, the pure pure exploration of the game because moving forward to Shenmue 2 I already knew how how to play the game I guess but I really enjoyed the characters in Shenmue 2 you know the new characters that we are introduced to uh, especially Shenmue Ling I think that sh she would play a very cool role in Shenmue 3 of course that she's an important character Ren I love that guy probably my favorite Shenmue 2 character I love that is kind of a rival and a friend at the same time of Ryu. But the whole saga, especially in Shenmue 2, it felt like I was playing or I was taking a role inside of an old-schooled 80s martial arts movie. It reminded me a little bit of old-school Jackie Chan stuff. Other times it reminded me a little bit of, of blood sports. And another very nice touch is the fact that the game takes place in the late 80s. I love that. Now, I'm going to be picky about a couple of stuff. The first is that in Shenmue 1 there's there's a thing <laughs> that f for me it is it is unnecessary and it is boring. It is not the fact that you have to work, you have a job, that's part of the story, I'm fine with it, but it's the racing thing in the factories. That to me was just boring, you know. It was boring because it was every single day, you know, during that part of the game and uh it just can't avoid it, you can't skip it, and uh, at the end, it, it, it really doesn't matter nothing, you know, to the whole story, to the whole picture of the game. And another thing, and I know that you guys are going to hate me for that, but I can deal with it, is the voice acting. Yes, I know that is part of the experience, but guys, 
I didn't play these back in the day and uh, the voice acting is just, it's just bad. And even the sound, you know, the compression and the editing of the sound is, it's, it's noisy, it's, it's dirty. However, I got around that. And for me, again, this is just my personal opinion. This is how I enjoyed Shenmue 1 and 2. I prefer to play these in Japanese and uh, I played both in Japanese. And with the upcoming Shenmue 3, I don't know, but uh, I'll probably play it in Japanese also because I like that. Now, I'm not going to give any spoilers for you guys that still haven't played these. There's a thing in Shenmue 2 that I found it very cool and that has to do with Shenmue, with actual meaning of Shenmue. When I found what Shenmue is, I was mind blown because it was so simple, yet it was so amazing. And I'm not gonna lie guys, I shed a tear. I shed a tear in that part of the game. And the end of the game, the end of Shenmue 2, probably one of the biggest cliffhangers in gaming history. And for all of you Shenmue fans, for all of you that played these back in the day, that yeah, that was, that was a hard pill to swallow, I can only imagine. But the good news is that Shenmue 3 is almost here. And I really, really wish, and I'm not saying this for myself, I'm saying this, you know, for the fans, you know, for the hardcore fans of Shenmue. I really wish for this upcoming game in the series, Shenmue 3, to be an amazing game, to be the best, the best of the three. Because the fans, the community, deserve a game like that. I mean, it was it was a long wait, and uh, I take my hat to the Shenmue community. More than 15 years, and uh, fans never lost hope. A very, very strong and united community around Shenmue, and that to me, that that is what that is what I love about this community. That's the reason why why I make YouTube videos. That's the reason why why I'm a gamer. It's not just about playing video games and enjoy them. That's the good part, but the big picture for me is to to share these experiences. And to sum it up, guys, that's the point of this video. And I know that this video is a little bit different from the stuff that I usually do here on the channel. Usually I make, you know, reviews about games or I talked about, you know, my video game memories. And this was not the case, I know that. This was just me sharing with you guys my reactions to, to a game that it took me a while to jump into. But let me say this, the Shenmue community got a brand new fan. And day one, I'm going to pick Shenmue 3, no questions about it. And for all of you who still haven't jumped into the Shenmue wagon, I mean, just give it a try. Just pick these remasters of the original games. I mean, pick it for the PS4, for the Xbox One. I don't care, but uh, just just give it a try. And if it is not for you, that is totally okay. As a matter of fact, I don't think that Shenmue is for everybody, but just, just go with it. I mean, let the game take you. And don't forget that you are playing a game that is almost 20 years old, so just just keep an open mind. And that's all that I have for you guys today. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. And let me know, let me know down below if you are a Shenmue fan. Let me know if you played these back in the day. Let me know if you just played them now like me. What is your favorite, Shenmue 1 or Shenmue 2 and why? And finally, let me know what you hope to see in Shenmue 3. Let's wrap the video guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the show, feel free to check out the Retro Raiders Patreon page. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to put a like on this video. Please subscribe to the channel and take care of yourselves, take care of the gaming community and game a lot.